Hello everyone and welcome back to Neuroscience Methods 101. Today we will be discussing diffusion tensor imaging or DTI. The white matter tissue of the brain contains axons which form the connections between neurons. Making a map of these white matter fibers allows for understanding which areas in the brain are strongly connected. Consequently, this gives an idea from where to where information is flowing in the brain. With a standard structural MRI scan, white matter can be identified. However, it is very difficult to actually see the different connections and along which direction different axonal bundles are going. For that, we need DTI. As we already have seen in our introductory video on MRI, an MRI scanner is great at picking up hydrogen atoms. So in a structural MRI scan, tissues with more or less water content can be distinguished. Importantly, hydrogen atoms don't stand still, but are constantly moving around. But they cannot just go anywhere they want. For example, within white matter, hydrogen atoms mostly move along the direction of the axon, similar to water moving through a straw. Now, let's take a more detailed look at how DTI can detect the differences in hydrogen atom movement in the brain. In the MRI scanner, hydrogen protons align themselves to the magnetic field and spin around their own axis, all in the same phase. First, let's take a look at an example where hydrogen atoms do not move. When performing a DTI scan, a gradient is added to the magnetic field. As a consequence, the synchronized spinning of the protons is disrupted, and depending on the magnetic field, some protons spin faster and some others spin slower. If we afterwards apply another magnetic field gradient that is exactly opposite to the first and is applied for the exact same amount of time, the effect of the first gradient would just be nullified. In other words, at the end of the application of the second gradient, all protons would be spinning in the same phase again, just as they did in the beginning. Now this example is only true if hydrogen atoms wouldn't move, but of course in reality they do move. In that situation, just as in the first example, the first gradient would cause the protons to spin differently from each other. But because the protons are moving, the second gradient will not have the same effect as the first. That means the second gradient does not nullify the effects of the first gradient. So that means that protons will be in a different location and spin in a different phase. And this will lead to a decreased signal. Therefore, in places where protons can move freely, such as in the ventricles, the signal is very low. But in other places, where protons are more restricted in their movement, such as grey matter, signal will be higher. Everything we've explained up until now describes diffusion-weighted imaging. It is used as a tool to find areas with limited water diffusion, which can be indicative of neurological conditions such as a stroke. But when thinking about diffusion tensor imaging, most people think of beautiful pictures of rainbow spaghetti. To create this, we need to do a few more things. Axons, in the white matter, resemble tubes or tunnels. This means that hydrogen protons in the axons can move freely along the direction of the axon, but are much more restricted from side to side. This is what we call an isotropic movement, and to measure it, we need to observe all three dimensions of a 3D space. Let's look at an example where the axon follows the z-direction of the 3D space. In the x and y direction, there is not a lot of hydrogen movement going on but in the z direction there is. Since we are interested in all these directions, x, y and z, we need multiple magnetic field gradients for different directions. In that way we can capture in which direction hydrogen protons move the most. The value that represents protons moving more in one direction than in the other is called fractional anisotropy. Put everything together and we get our spaghetti brain image, showing all the white matter tracts of the brain. As a final touch, we can give the image some colors, which represent different directions of the 3D space. Now, that's it. We hope you enjoyed our explanation about DTI. If you did, consider giving this video a like. And as always, we hope to see you the next time.